September 2020. We were in the silliest season of them all. Drivers were moving all over the place. And no, I don't mean this kind of moving. I'm talking about driver transfers. And there was one subplot to the main plot. Where would the iconic Schumacher name in the form of Mick end up driving in F1? I, as well as many others, thought that he'd be heading to Alfa Romeo to replace an aging Kimi Raikkonen and the very under the radar Antonio Giovinazzi. And then in September 2020, Giovinazzi said this, nobody can take my seat for next year. And just for clarity, this is what he said in full. But when he said this, I was just thinking, I actually like the confidence, the absolute confidence that this long haired Italian has. But how was he so confident about having a seat in 2021? What was I missing in terms of what he had to offer? And is he a paid driver? Welcome to The Racing House, my name is Saki and keep watching to find out if Antonio Giovinazzi is a pay driver and why I think Alfa Romeo have chosen to continue with him in 2021. I don't want to assume that everybody knows why him coming out with such a bold statement was, if I'm being blunt, a bit strange. But to give it some context, looking at the Alfa Romeo driver lineup, there is a 41-year-old Kimi Raikkonen and a 27-year-old Antonio Giovinazzi. These are both very mature ages in F1, especially Kimi. He still managed to beat his younger teammate in both seasons in 2019 and 2020. Antonio has shown some good performances in GP2. In 2016, he came second. In 2020, been a lot closer to Kimi Raikkonen but on paper Kimi is actually still beating him 12-5 during races and maybe I'm being a bit harsh because I know that Antonio started single-seater racing at the age of 19 but he only had his first full season in F1 at the age of 25 so what is it about him that makes him so attractive to Alfa Romeo and Ferrari firstly he's very well connected with F1 we all know it's about having those personal relationships and being well connected but you have to combine it with money as well as talent and he definitely has that personal relationship thing going on when you look at his manager. He's managed by a certain individual called Enrico Zanarini. And why is his manager so important? Well, his manager's relationship with people in F1 go all the way back to 1994 when his manager began to manage Eddie Irvine. And then in 1996, he managed to broker the deal to take Eddie Irvine to Ferrari. So his experience of working with Ferrari goes back decades. And if you're thinking this was just a one-off, he also managed Giancarlo Fisichella. In 2009, he manufactured a move for Fisichella to drive for Ferrari for five races, and then as test driver in 2010, 11, and 12. And when you look even further, Zanarini managed another driver, Antonio Fucho. Fucho? Fucho? Fuoco. He was part of the Ferrari Driver Academy from 2013 all the way up until 2018 and now he's taken up a role as a simulator driver for Ferrari. If you're thinking that was it, there was something else that really caught my attention. He's expanded his work to cover sponsorship and sponsorship promotion and if you look closely, there's one brand that really caught my attention. Zanarini's company claimed to have a long lasting relationship with a company called Casper Sky Lab. Does that look and sound familiar? Well, you'd be right because it's the brand that sponsors Ferrari they have got their logo slapped all over the Ferrari car and the helmets of the drivers that race those cars now I'm not saying that Zanarini is the reason that they are sponsoring Ferrari but if he has a strong relationship with them on a number of levels he's more likely to bring influence and have that respect for Ferrari as well as that long-lasting relationship that he's had with Ferrari for decades this can only help Antonio Giovinazzi when it comes to contract negotiations and securing a seat in F1 another reason why Giovinazzi has been so attractive for Ferrari and Alfa Romeo is the great work that he's been said to have done in the simulator in the 2017 and 20 2018 season. One example can be found during the Canadian Grand Prix in 2018 where Ferrari were kind of struggling. He was experimenting with setups for qualifying and he put in so many laps on the simulator for that qualifying session and it was a breakthrough from him that allowed them to implement something in the car for qualifying which Sebastian Vettel went on to set the pole position for and he converted that pole position into a race victory. And this is such a standout performance because the racetrack is a stronghold for the Mercedes team since 2015 and a stronghold for Lewis Hamilton who's won six out of the past 10 races in the last 10 years at that track and that's just an example that we know of so he really did impress and provide immense value here during his time working in a simulator for Ferrari and when it comes to making a decision about who Alpha pick in that driver lineup going forward Ferrari will have a large degree of influence there's going to be that loyalty because he's put in the hours he's been dedicated to Ferrari and he's proved his worth in some sense. 
So those are all good reasons to give Giovinazzi more time in the car, but is he actually a paid driver? And it's a tough question to answer, but there is some very interesting information out there, but we'll go through the reasons why he may be a paid driver. Firstly, he was never picked up by a driver academy at any of the F1 teams. He didn't really have that glaringly obvious talent that would make a team want to sign him up as quick as the likes of a Landon Norris or a Max Verstappen. It just wasn't there. And that kind of had a knock-on effect in terms of the age that I already mentioned that he started driving. He only started driving in the single seaters at the age of 19, which is very late. And if you look at a lot of other drivers, for example, Lando Norris and Max Verstappen, they were definitely racing in F1 at the age of 19. What is known is that he was able to make it through the junior categories after karting from the funding and sponsorship of a very wealthy individual. And who is that wealthy individual, I hear you asking? Well, it's a man called Ricardo Galil, the father of F2 driver, Sean Galil. He's the very wealthy owner of the Indonesian division of KFC. What Giovinazzi said is that he basically funded his career from karting all the way up to F1, which is a very kind thing to do. It does make me wonder if he's provided this financial assistance all the way up to F1, then why would he stop doing it if it meant him securing his seat at Alfa Romeo going forward? To me, it makes perfect sense. He wants his finance and assistance to allow Giovinazzi to drive in F1 for as long as possible. So why stop now? This is even more important when you look at his son, Sean Galil, who is very unlikely to make it to F1. And these are in his father's own words. When I first started with this video, I was expecting to get some very basic answers, either a yes or a no, or maybe even just no information at all. But from what I can see, he's got some very strong relationships in the sport. And on top of that, he's an Italian driver, which is a rare thing in the sport, linked with Ferrari driving for Alfa Romeo, two of the most historic and iconic names, not just in F1, but also in Italy. For Ferrari, it's probably a decision of staying loyal to the driver that's helped them out so much, allowing him to develop into a more well-rounded driver. If I was to give my opinion on whether they should have given him more time, I can't quite get over the fact that he's being beaten by his teammate who is well past his prime. And now I know some people will argue that Kimi Raikkonen has age and experience on his side, but what I'm going to do is compare what happened with Charles Leclerc when he entered the same team and went up against Marcus Ericsson in 2018. In Charles' debut season, he finished in 13th place on 39 points, with a best race finish of 6th place. When you compare that to his teammate Marcus Ericsson, who had been in F1, for four seasons at that point. He only managed to finish in 17th place in the championship on nine points with a best race finish of only eight. Giovinazzi is a good driver, but he isn't a top tier quality driver like a Charles Leclerc or a Max Verstappen. If he was, he'd be beating his teammate or at least matching him. And if you look at 2020, yes, he's matched him in terms of points. They came out of equal points. But if you look at the head-to-head -head for each race, like I said before, Kimi Raikkonen came out on top 12-5. So like I said, Ferrari will have a large degree of influence in terms of which drivers get placed in the Alfa Romeo team. They're going to do things their own unique way. They'll give some drivers more time than others and then other drivers will have little to no opportunity to show their ability. But maybe I'm being a little bit harsh. Do you think that Giovinazzi deserves a third year in F1 driving for Alfa Romeo? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you think he's a paid driver? Are there any bits of information that I haven't included in this video? Leave a comment in the comment section below. And that just about finishes off my video on if Joe Fanazzi is a paid driver and why I think Ferrari and Alfa Romeo have gone for him to drive the Alfa Romeo car for 2021. Until next time everyone, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to ensure that you get all my latest videos.